maybe you think I'm crazy. Um, maybe I am, I don't know. But if you're looking at buying a Ram truck, these 5.7 Hemis are, are just, they're good, they're solid engines. And for the most part, they're gonna give you good reliability, good longevity, and tons of power. Well, we have this nice silver Ram 1500 with us today with the 5.7 Hemi, which we will get into today quite a bit. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty good looking truck. This is obviously a fifth gen Ram, um, four by four off-road package on her. It is a big horn. And uh, yeah, I mean, the big horn's a pretty middle road trim and it looks pretty good. I love the dual exhausts. Um, I think that's a really nice touch. And I just think Ram generally makes a pretty good looking truck, even at their quote unquote lower tiers. But like I said earlier, we are going to dive deep into this 5.7 Hemi and see what it's all about. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I owned a 5.7 Hemi for a number of years, so I'm excited to talk about it. Now, firstly, I wanna talk about just a little bit of history with the 5.7, where it came from, um, some updates over the years, and then we'll dive into some things that I really, really like about this Hemi. And finally, we'll talk about some things, some very well-known issues about this 5.7 Hemi and some things I don't like. Jumping right into it, um, in 2003, Chrysler introduced the 5.7 Hemi. Um, that engine replaced the long-standing 5.9 liter Magnum V8. Um, originally, the 5.7 Hemi came with 345 horsepower as well as 375 pound-feet of torque, which at the time was a pretty powerful engine. In 2009, Chrysler completely overhauled this 5.7 Hemi with the release of their fourth gen Ram 1500 with the prime motive apparently being efficiency. Now, this engine got a completely new engine block, new pistons, new crankshaft, new connecting rods, new cylinder head. Um, as well as the introduction of things like variable valve timing, um, MDS or multi-cylinder displacement, which is their cylinder deactivation technology was now in this engine. The combustion chamber was obviously changed, increasing the compression ratio to 10.5 to one, um, as well as giving this engine more power. This engine now comes with 395 horsepower as well as 410 foot-pounds of torque. So a really big update in 2009 However, they still consider it the same generation of 5.7 Hemi, which is interesting. Now, one of the more noticeable changes in these later 5.7 Hemis is that Chrysler raised the camshaft further up in the block, and we'll talk about that later in the video as to why that could have potentially contributed to the Hemi lifter failures or the Hemi tick as it is better known. But for the most part, um, these are the exact same engines that came out in 2009. This is a 2023 truck and well, it basically is the exact same engine. There has really been no changes since 2009. Um, and what we can see that just with the power numbers, this still makes 395 horsepower as well as 410 pound feet of torque. And to me, that's usually a good sign when a manufacturer is comfortable running an engine for 15 years. It generally means that they're not losing money on it, which means it's a good, reliable engine for the most part. Keep in mind, guys, I did used to own one of these trucks. It was actually a fourth gen Bighorn. Um, so, and I, I really like the 5.7 Hemi, so there may be a little bit of bias, but for the most part, I'll try and keep this baby nice and honest. The first thing that I really like about this 5.7 Hemi is the bottom end strength. So in this engine, you get a very strong cast iron crankshaft, forged connecting rods, it's a four bolt main. Um, and these engines, they can just take some good abuse on that bottom end. Very rarely, if ever, do you hear about a 5.7 Hemi having bottom end issues. Uh, in my opinion, they are just very, very well built from the bottom up. Now, as we'll talk about later, like I said, the top end on these engines are not issue free, um, but in terms of the bottom end strength, this thing is a pretty strong unit. The second pro and the thing I like most about this 5.7 Hemi is, well, its size as well as power output. Now, the 5.7 Hemi is the second largest V8 you can get in the 1500 segment, falling only behind the 6.2 liter from GM, but with 5.7 liters of displacement, the power output is just very responsive. It's right at the touch of your foot and 
Anyone who has driven a 5.7 Hemi can agree, the power is just right there with that nice big displacement and the power just keeps on coming when you put your foot down. And that is mostly because Chrysler purposely designed these engines to have a very broad torque band. So we can look at the torque chart anywhere between like 1500 RPM and like 4800 RPM, you are approaching 410 foot pounds of torque, which is the peak torque out of this engine. Um, so that power is just always available, it seems, and it just keeps on coming. Now, when we tow with this truck, 8,000 pounds, we'll get to see if that's true, if that torque is really truly available. I also think the amount of power this thing makes out of a pushrod V8 is somewhat impressive. Looking at the Ford 5 liter, the power numbers are almost identical, however, um, that engine utilizes dual overhead cams, multiple timing chains in order to enable a higher red line to get that much power. Um, so it's a little bit more of a complex engine where this 5.7 Hemi is more or less a simpler design. And, you know, on paper, simplicity tends to lead to more reliability. And I really like that about the 5.7 Hemi being able to make that much power out of a relatively simple design. The third pro and thing I like about this 5.7 V8 is, well, the fuel economy. And I think this is gonna shock some people because you would think the 5.7 Hemi, it's a very large displacement V8, and you think it'd just be a gas guzzler. But when you pair this engine with the standard um, 321 gears, it is a pretty efficient package and it shocked me when I first bought my 2017 Ram 1500 and I was breaking the engine in, I saw my fuel economy kind of start at like 15 miles per gallon, then it went up to 16, then to 17, then to 18, then 18.5, and then eventually even got to 19 miles per gallon. And I was driving a pretty fair 50-50 city and highway and I was shocked how efficient it was coming from an older V8 in a Chevy 1500. Taking a look at the biggest V8 in the segment, the 6.2 liter um, from GM, when I drove that engine, I was getting like 12, 13 miles to the gallon, which again, it has more power than this engine here, the Hemi, um, but you know, the fuel economy was way worse. And you would think both of these kind of bigger displacement V8s, they'd sort of have kind of the same type of fuel economy. And this Hemi is way more efficient. And this engine is almost 15 years old and it's still getting that great of economy. So I think it's one of the most overlooked benefits, if you will, of the 5.7 Hemi. Granted, it is a 400 horsepower V8. And if you're driving stoplight to stoplight in the city, you are not gonna get great fuel economy. But if you are driving a half decent mix of highway and city, these things are honestly pretty efficient engines. Now, finally, what I really like about the 5.7 Hemi is the sound it makes. I think this is one of the best sounding engines out there right now. Um, you know, you just have that really, really nice low end grumble. And then when you put your foot down, you just get that really nice snappy sound. And um, I think anyone who's driven the 5.7 Hemi, you, when you put your foot down, you know you're driving a pretty big displacement V8. So even with the stock muffler, stock resonator, there is a really nice rumble to the truck, to the engine. And obviously when I own my truck, the, uh, the gearhead I am, well, the muffler kind of fell off and uh, there was just a straight pipe put in there instead. And I'll put a couple of clips up on the, on the screen here for you guys. And uh, it sounds pretty nasty in my opinion, but let me know what you think. Well, as I always say, no engine is perfect. And well, this 5.7 Hemi is absolutely no exception. There are some highly popularized issues with this 5.7 Hemi and we are gonna dive deep into them. The number one issue and by far the most common issue with these 5.7 Hemis is exhaust manifold leaks. So basically what happens is for whatever reason, the back studs on the exhaust manifold tend to break or snap and that is going to allow some exhaust gases to escape. It sounds very ticky. It's, it's, it's quite an annoying noise, 
um, and that is the number one issue with these engines by far. Usually these exhaust manifold leaks are very obvious when you first start the truck up and sometimes what happens is as the the block and the manifold heat up, it expands and you actually close down that exhaust leak. But when you first start the engine, you can hear that t -t 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 and that is that exhaust manifold leak. When it gets bad enough, you hear it all the time. And I feel like a lot of people watching this video know exactly what I'm talking about. You see a Ram 1500 and you just know the exhaust manifold is leaking because you can just hear it. The silver lining of that though is there's really no harm to the engine. It's just more of an annoyance. Maybe you'll run a little bit richer just because the O2 sensors are missing some of that exhaust gases, but in terms of damaging the engine with that issue, you're really not going to. Um, now, the repair for that, it's not necessarily a hard job, but it's not something that I would probably want to uh, attempt on the driveway either. Usually, from what I've read online, you're gonna run into like 600 to $1,000 to repair um, a broken stud. So again, it's not gonna break the bank, but it is definitely not a cheap and easy repair. Another issue with these 5.7 Hemis, and probably the most talked about issue is the Hemi lifter failures or the Hemi tick. And you can go online, there's tons of videos made about this issue, people talking about it all the time. It's highly popularized, um, so we'll dive into it and see exactly what I think's going on. Now the lifter issue stems from the lifter roller needle bearings failing, and when those needle bearings fail, um, basically what you're getting is a lot of slop in that roller and instead of the lifter roller gently riding over the cam lobe as it spins around, you're going to get that roller more or less kind of smashing into the cam lobe and that's what brings that, that metallic ticking noise or the hemi tick as they say, um, that's what you're hearing. And so eventually what you're gonna do is you're gonna wear down, that, wear down that cam lobe as the roller keeps smashing into it. You're gonna spread metal throughout the engine and eventually wear the cam lobe down so much where you actually get misfires on that cylinder. Um, that is, in a nutshell, the Hemi lifter failures. So once a lifter failure has been detected, um, you're gonna need to replace the camshaft as well as the lifter that has been damaged. And that is gonna run anywhere from like four to $5,000, depending on the shop, maybe more. Um, so it is not a cheap and easy fix. It's a pretty labor intensive job. And that is definitely the crown jewel of issues with this 5.7 Hemi. If your engine has suffered a lifter failure and you get the repair done, more than likely you have had some type of metal debris go through the engine, maybe through the main bearings. So there is a high likelihood that your engine life has been shortened somewhat even after repairing the issue. So one of the first theories as to why these lifter failures happen is simply due to bad lifters or bad lifter roller needle bearings. And well, there may be something to that. I've heard of guys getting brand new OEM lifters and having like needle bearings actually missing. All it takes is for one needle bearing to be off by like one to two to three thousandths of an inch and that needle bearing will most likely fail causing the whole lifter to fail and causing this issue to happen. Now to even further that theory, uh, in 2016 Ram switched their lifter manufacturers to a different manufacturer quoting that there could be some potential quality control issues with that previous supplier. So there could be something there. Another major thinking as to why these lifters are failing is simply due to a lack of lubrication. So I talked about in the beginning of the video how Ram moved the camshaft further up in the block, basically creating more distance between the rotating assembly and the camshaft. Now that rotating assembly is gonna be flinging oil all over the place. And well, Uncle Tony's Garage, he made a really, really good video kind of explaining his theory and what he saw and why he thinks lack of lubrication is the main issue. Um, he goes on to say that the lifter bores themselves and the angle that they're at, as well as the height of the camshaft, result in a lack of oil getting to the lifter rollers and therefore the lifter roller needle bearings are failing because of that. Um, so I'll link his video down below. You can check that out if you want. The final possibility or theory as to why these lifters are failing and probably what I think is actually more likely is simply just bad or dirty oil. So the lifters in this engine are hydraulically controlled lifters and when you have dirty oil or sludge that builds up with bad oil, um, you can start to clog up those very small oil galleries or check balls within the lifters themselves and that can affect the valve train lash. 
And so the valve train backlash is basically how much um, space you have between the moving components of that valve train. And if that hydraulic lifter can't get enough oil pressure in there because of a clogged gallery, you're just not gonna have that correct valve lash. And that means instead of the lifter roller calmly going up and over that lobe, you're gonna get more of that smashing going on and that's gonna take out those needle bearings very quickly. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is simply just the breakdown of oil additives with very long extended oil lives, which these trucks have. And when you have those breakdown of additives, the lubrication qualities of the oil can go down dramatically when it comes to protecting metal on metal surfaces. And that is another real possibility of why these lifter needle bearings are failing as well. Um, I know firsthand when I had my Ram 1500, um, it wanted me to change my oil at like 14,000 kilometers, which to me is wildly too long on oil. Even if you're running synthetic oil with a good oil filter, it's a long time for to run oil. Overall, I do think the lifter issues on this 5.7 Hemi are a little bit overblown, but it is without a doubt a very real problem that these engines do face. Um, if it were my truck, my engine, I would highly recommend using very high quality oil, making sure you have a good oil filter, um, as well as changing your oil anywhere from like five to 6,000 miles. I think that's a pretty, pretty decent interval. I would also really try and limit your idle time. It does seem like higher idled 5.7 Hemis have a higher likelihood of lifter failures for a number of reasons. Um, so that's what I would do if I owned a 5.7 Hemi. Now my final point about these lifter failures, the Hemi tick, is that people seem to think that the MDS, the multi cylinder displacement, the cylinder deactivation technology in these engines is the main culprit of these lifter failures. And in my opinion, it just simply is not. I'm certainly not a fan of MDS and there is real possibility for that um, multi-cylinder displacement technology to fail. However, I think people are kind of just lumping that in with the Chevy lifter failures because without a doubt in the Chevy platforms, the 5.3, the 6.2s, those lifter failures are 100% caused by their cylinder deactivation technology. I don't think these lifter failures are caused by Ram cylinder deactivation technology. I think there's more to, more to the issue than that, um, but let me know what you guys think. Um, always love hearing from you guys if you own one of these trucks, if you've had a lifter failure. So those two issues, the exhaust manifold leaks as well as the potential lifter failures are the two things that would most concern me if I was gonna be buying one of these 5.7 Hemis. Um, there are some other issues um, to just briefly mention. It seems like the spark plugs are somewhat failing prematurely in some engines. And we do have to remember there are 16 spark plugs in these engines with the multi-cylinder displacement technology in it, um, as well as some coolant leaks happening on these engines. And then lastly, um, in salty climates, climates I live in, it seems like the oil pans are likely to rust out. So those are some other issues to maybe look into if you are seriously looking at buying a 5.7 Hemi. So to conclude, obviously the 5.7 Hemi is not perfect, but before I bought my 2017 Ram 1500, I really had no ties to the 5.7 Hemi. Um, and as I owned it throughout the years, it really honestly grew on me. I really liked that engine. Currently I have a 6.4 Hemi, my Ram 2500, and it's fine, it does the job. I don't you know, dislike it, but I truly miss my 5.7 Hemi. It just was such a good, it was just a really good engine. Um, and maybe I'm biased, but I really enjoyed my time with the 5.7 Hemi. As always guys, let me know if you've owned one of these Hemis, if you've had good luck with it, if you've had bad luck, maybe you hate it, maybe you think I'm crazy, um, maybe I am, I don't know. But if you're looking at buying a Ram truck, these 5.7 Hemis are, are just, they're good, they're solid engines, and for the most part, they're gonna give you good reliability, good longevity, and tons of power. So that's my thoughts. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, we'll be towing with this truck, um, well, right now, but next week we'll post a video. Um, so that should be cool. We'll see how this thing does with 8,000 pounds behind it. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to have you guys on board. Anyways, enough of me. We're gonna load up that trailer and uh, send her down the highway, but uh, we'll see you in the video next week.